Hi, it's Mr. Rowe from Creative Build. I have many more unique videos planned, so click subscribe if you like this one. Hit that again. So here we are, part two. In the first video, I showed the bar face that we were making in the scallop profile and how to make this upper and lower die. So I made a feeder using angle iron and some plywood uh, to ensure that the raw material is fed into the die uh, at 90 degrees to the press. Um, this angle iron here just ensures that the material doesn't bend up when the die uh, comes in contact with the steel. As you see there, it allows it to move. And then we're just feeding the material in by hand, uh, one scallop at a time. So we decided to use um, just your basic hand soap uh, as a lubricant on the, the maple lower die. Um, you can see there's a little bit of wear happening with the uh, scallop profile. So you can see I, le I left a little bit of space on each side so the material can move freely. Um, you can see here it, it wants to kind of twist and, and move around. That's why we need the side guides. So you can see the importance of having the three positions. The first is doing the majority of the work and it's wearing out the, uh, the maple uh, bottom die uh, quite quickly actually. So I only have 10 of these panels to make. So by restriking on the second and third scallop locations, we have a continuous shape being formed. So you can see here that the, the press has two independent cylinders that are run independently. So you have to bring them down at exactly the same time. And uh, we have the flow controls uh, turned right down so um, we can do that fairly easily. So I mentioned in the last video that I've made a scallop shape before. This was only about one inch across and it was for the corners of this uh, reception desk for the Roost Hotel in Philadelphia. Yeah, you said Washington last time. With the press I've made uh, custom channels for this uh, light fixture and um, with this die here uh, we created corner legs for this uh, kind of retro table. And its original purpose was for this patio table. And here's some vintage footage of us uh, straightening it out. And that large pipe right there uh, is to create the radius for the corners of the patio table. Okay. Oh, he said stop. Now let it up. Yeah. Let's see. So return. When I first made the press, it uh, was run by an air over oil type pump and it was very slow. That's what you hear chugging away. Uh, now I have a hydraulic pump on it. It's a lot faster and then usually you have to slow it down so I can control what I'm doing. Anyway, let's go back to the show already in progress. I gotta say it's kind of a little bit of a satisfying crunch every time it comes down and, and presses the steel. I also created a um, just a little bit of an outfeed table here with a piece of plywood just to keep the material straight. You can really see that the uh, the first station, the maple, is really wearing out at the uh, this the point between the first and second stations. Um, I think if I was to do this again and I had a lot more to do, I would line the maple. Uh, with a piece of steel. So stamp one piece and then fasten it down so it would have a protective layer on it. This press has to be very versatile and multi-use because it eats up a lot of real estate in the shop but I think it's earned its keep for now. So there you go we have a stack of 10 nearly identical panels um, ready to be painted and in the next video I will show them installed on the face of the oval bar.
and there's a really good chance I'll never use this die again. So we're finally installing the, the oval bar at the brewery in Toronto, so stay tuned for part three.